this is easy to be time for ghost stories, but here in the offices of Ebenezer Scrooge and his law good partner, Jacob Marley, our ghostly tales begin. Let me say again that M old Molly was dead. This you must understand. Mr. Scrooge, sir, may I have a piece of food with fire, sir? Absolutely not. A coat costs money. Doesn't your coat keep you warm? Not really, sir. Then I suggest you get a new one. But, uh, sir. That's enough, Mr. Cratchit. I suppose you want a day off tomorrow? Yes, sir. Chris so you want me to. Here, sir. So you want me to pay you for a day you're not working? You better be here even earlier in the next morning. Scrooge's nephew arrived and have a spread and Christmas. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Bah, humbug. A Christmas humbug? You don't mean it. I do. What reason do you have to be merry? You're not wealthy. What reason do you have to be so gloomy? You're with all your riches. Bah, humbug. What is Christmas but a time of wasting money on things you don't need? If I had my way, every day who's goes about saying Merry Christmas would be boiled in their own pudding. Uncle! Nephew! You celebrate your holidays in my way, let me celebrate it in mine. But you don't celebrate it. But let me not celebrate it then. But take me advice. Celebrating has done you no good. There are many things that do us good without making us rich. The holidays have never put a scrap of gold in my pocket. I'm all the better off for having celebrated it up. Yes, yes. Quiet, Mr. Cratchit. Are you spending Christmas so looking for a new job? Don't be angry. We'll have Christmas dinner with us. Humbug. Why not? That's enough. Good day, nephew. So be it. But I shall keep my Christmas spirit till the end. Merry Christmas, Uncle. Merry Christmas, Mr. Cratchit. Have Happy New Year, Master Fred. There's a ridiculous notion. My Lord, barely enough money to feed his family and cripple child talking about a Happy New Year. I must be mad. <laughs> Scrooge sat by the fireplace in his dreary house. He had the door fly open and the rattling of chains. What's that noise? Passing through the heavy door to Scrooge's chamber came a ghost with death cold eyes. It said it was wrapped in bandages and had chains locked around its body. Pooh poo, I'm not a man to be frightened by shadows. You don't believe in me? I don't. The ghost raised a frightful cry and shook his chains with an awful <coughs> Walked to his knees and covered his face. Mercy, dreadful spirit, what is it that you want with me? Much. I am the ghost of your partner, Jacob Marley. I wander through the world forever and have to drag these chains. Woe is me. But why are you chained? Each length of this chain is a punishment for some kind deed that I failed to do. Oh, why did I not show charity? But Jacob, you're such a good businessman. You made so much money. Again, the ghost raised a cry and shook his chain. Ah! I should have been kind to Ebenezer. Your chains were the same length as mine seven Christmas Eves ago. Imagine how long they are now. Jacob, what can I do about it? You will be visited by three ghosts. Listen to what they say. The first one will be here when the clock strikes one. Scrooge walked by the first ghost, a gentle spirit in a long white gown. I am the ghost of Christmas past. I will show you your life as it used to be. Rise and walk with me. They passed magically in a Scrooge's past. The ghost and Scrooge were suddenly standing inside an old warehouse. Do you know this place? No, it. I held my first job here. Why, it's old Mr. Fezziwig. He was a decent man. Next to Mr. Fezziwig, Scrooge saw himself as a cheerful young man. It's Christmas Eve. Yo ho, everyone. No more work tonight. Clear the floor for dancing and cooling and celebrating. The food was brought in, the music began, and everyone started dancing, including young Scrooge. Such a waste of money as this. Waste of money? Look how happy everyone is. Mr. Fezziwig is always making people happy. Little things mostly, like the way he looked at you or a pat on the back. But who did you dance with? Ah, uh, Belle. It's young Belle. You loved her, but you didn't marry her. I first needed to seek my fortune. So you chose money instead of loving her. Spirit, why do you torture me? Show me no more. I do not wish to see this. The spirit disappears. Scrooge finds himself back in the spirit took Scrooge to a park. Oh no, not this Christmas! Young Scrooge was sitting on a bench, but he wasn't alone. There was a woman sitting next to him. And that is not very little to you. Another idol has replaced me. What idol has replaced you? A golden one! It's merely wealth, nothing more. But you want it so much, you will not take care of me! But our contract? Our contract is an old one, and you have changed since then. I therefore release you. Uh, what, did I ever ask for release? Not with words, but still I release you. You want money more than anything! But I was just a boy. No! I'm done with you! Uh, 
A tear ran down Scrooge's cheek as the scene disappeared. That was <laughs> I am the ghost of Christmas presents. You have never seen the likes of me before. The second spirit was gigantic and as grand and joyful as the season. Its eyes were clear and kind, yet they frightened Scrooge. Spirit, take me where you will. Let me learn from it. Look upon me. You and I will go and see things as they are now. After this, then. The ghost of Scrooge ap appeared in the doorway of a small house. Where are we? You don't know the house of your uncle or the crutches? Come inside, the family. It's just sitting down for Christmas dinner. Tiny Tim hobbled to the table using an odd wooden crutch. Mother, there was never such a grand goose as this. Splendid, my dear, a triumph. So excited over a small goose, you'd think it was a prized turkey. So they can afford one very well off family. True, but a happy one, especially that Tim. A toast to Mr. Scrooge, the founder of our feast. The founder of our feast, indeed. I wish he was here now. I'd give him a piece of my mind to feast upon. My dear, it's not be bitter. Fine, I'll toast to his health, but that's all. Long live Mr. Scrooge, the unfeeling, stingy, unkind founder of our feast. Merry Christmas! God bless us, everyone. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see an empty seat. See a tiny crutch with no water. Oh no, Spirit! Tell me that he will live! There is no change in his surroundings. The child will die. as the ghost vanishes, suddenly another ghost appears. The third phantom was cloaked in a black robe. Nothing could be seen of him except one outstretched hand. You are the ghost of Christmas yet to come? The ghost didn't answer. It pointed its long, bony finger into the night. Ghost, I fear you more than the others. The spirit took Scrooge to a lonely cemetery that was covered in weeds. A coffin is being lowered into the ground. Whose funeral is this? Why is no one here to mourn him? Tell me, spirit, is there anybody in town who cared for this man? When did he die? Last week. What was the matter with him? Empty heart, I suppose. Little good his money did him. Not a single pulse in the morning. Just think of how much money he's saving with such a cheap funeral. <laughs> <laughs> the phantom pointed toward the gravestone. Before I look, spirit, tell me one thing. Can this future still be changed? The spirit gave no reply. Scrooge trembled. He looked upon the gravestone and read the words, Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> no, hear me, spirit. I'm not the man I used to be. From now on, I will be a kind and generous man. I will honor Christmas in my heart. When Scrooge woke, he was so happy to see daylight that he laughed out loud. <laughs> for a man that had been out of practice for so long, it was a splendid laugh. He opened his window and called to a boy. What's today, my fine fellow? Today? Why, it's Christmas Day. Christmas? I haven't missed it. Do you know the prize turkey hanging in the butcher's window? The one as big as I am? Yes, that one. I'll pay you to go buy it. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas, sir. I'll have it delivered to Bob Crutch's house. They won't know who sent it. Why, then I'll go join my nephew for dinner. I haven't missed Christmas. Scrooge spent the rest of the day spreading Christmas cheer and joyfully sharing his wealth. Woo! Scrooge arrived at the office early. Cratchit entered, shivering from the cold. Mr. Cratchit, you're 18 and a half minutes late. I'm very sorry, sir. We were making merry rather long last night. It won't happen again. I'll tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to stand this any longer. Poor Bob Cratchit, he was certain he was about to be fired. And therefore, I'm doubling your salary. Cratchit was stunned. Merry Christmas, Bob. A Merry Christmas that I've ever given before. And your salary is just a start. I'll assist your struggling family in every way I can. And Tim, whatever he needs, he'll have it. Now, let's warm up this place. Put some more coal in the fire, Bob Cratchit. Before you got another eye, let's have some more coal. Scrooge was better than his wood. He became a good man, as good as a friend as the city knew. It was always said, if any man knew how to celebrate Christmas, it was Ebenezer Scrooge. May that be said of us all. And God bless us, everyone. Minutes 
this way. I'm very sorry, sir. We're making Mary rather long last night. It won't happen again. I'll tell you what. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 